Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. You know, I thought it'd be interesting to do an experiment on how heat treatment affects the ability of a steel plate to stop bullets. So, I took a piece of quarter inch thick uh, 4140 alloy steel flat bar and I cut it into three pieces. Now, the bar was initially in its annealed condition or its softest state, so one piece I did not heat treat, I left it in its annealed condition. Another piece I hardened by heating it red hot and then quenching it in oil. And a third piece I first hardened by heating it and quenching it and then I tempered it by reheating it to a prescribed temperature with a torch. And so now I'm going to shoot all three of these with a 223 and we'll see if there's any difference in how well the uh, 223 penetrates these steel plates. Now I'm just shooting a standard 55 grain full metal jacket round, nothing fancy. Now, if you recall, I did a previous episode uh, shooting different types of 223 bullets at a quarter inch thick A36 mild steel plate. Uh, and what we found in that episode was that it didn't really matter whether we were using a soft point, a hollow point, or a full metal jacket round. Uh, regardless of the particular bullet design, 223 rounds tend to punch right through a quarter inch of mild steel. Now, in its annealed condition, 4140 steel uh, really has pretty similar mechanical properties to A36 or any other uh, mild steel. So, we'd expect uh, a 223 round to punch a hole right through it and keep on going. And if you take a look at the annealed plate, we got exactly what I would have expected. Now, I haven't shot much hardened steel before, so I wasn't really sure what to expect on these other two plates. However, what I got was definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, specifically, if we look at the hardened plate, you can see it stopped the bullet with no appreciable damage. There's you know, some lead smeared on the plate where the bullet hit, and that's really all it did. The tempered plate, also stopped the bullet successfully, but if you look, and I, I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera, but this tempered plate is now cobwebbed with hairline cracks. Now that is an extremely counterintuitive result because the whole purpose of tempering steel is to trade off some of the hardness for toughness, thereby reducing the susceptibility of the plate to brittle fracture. So, I'm really surprised that the tempered plate cracked and the hardened plate didn't. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure how to explain it. Uh, my only hypothesis at this point is that, you know, I hardened these both in the same fire, but they were in different locations. It's possible that the plate that I then tempered uh, was heated next to a piece of coal that had a lot of sulfur in it and that the sulfur somehow leached into the steel and caused embrittlement that compromised the effectiveness of the tempering process. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on, but just to get another data point and see if we can figure this out, I think what I'm going to do now is take the hardened plate and go and temper it and then shoot it again and see if it cracks just like this one did. And while I'm at it, I might shoot this one again just to see what happens if it shatters now that it's cracked or, or what, you know, what the bullet will do to it.
So I shot the first tempered plate again and it shattered. Then I shot the second tempered plate, the one that had been previously hardened. And once again, uh, on the first shot, some cracks appeared. And on the second shot, it shattered completely. So it, we are getting consistent results with the tempered plates shattering after taking a few rounds. That makes me wonder, though, about the uh, hardened plate, if there actually perhaps were cracks the first time and they were just too small to see, or what would have happened if we actually shot the hardened plate multiple times. Um, so I think what I'm going to do now is go back and harden the annealed plate, and then shoot it a few times and see what happens to a hardened plate that's subjected to multiple impacts. So on the second test of a hardened 4140 plate, the first shot caused it to break more or less in half. Uh, I took the larger fragment and shot it again and it shattered. So at this point, I'm going to call that first test where the hardened plate stopped a 223 bullet with no visible damage merely a statistical anomaly. You know, when you start talking about brittle failure mechanisms, uh, a lot of times the failure mechanisms or phenomena are less deterministic than what we see with ductile failure modes. Uh, and I think that's really probably all that we're seeing here. So, in conclusion, it seems like in its annealed condition, a quarter inch plate of 4140 is just too soft to stop a 223 bullet while in its hardened condition, it'll stop the bullet, but it's so brittle that it shatters. And even in the quenched and tempered condition, you know, the tempering uh, based on tensile testing I've done before does significantly increase the tensile strength, but uh, it doesn't toughen the steel enough to stop repeated 223 uh, rounds. You know, again, we're seeing the tempered steel still shattering under repeated impact. Um, so, in principle, there's probably a heat treatment somewhere in between the fully soft annealed condition and the fully hardened or hardened and slightly tempered conditions that we tested here, where the steel might be uh, strong enough to stop the bullets and still, or, or rather hard enough to stop the bullets and still uh, ductile enough to do so without shattering. In practice, if such a heat treatment exists, the equipment that I've got is not precise enough to achieve such a heat treatment. Um, so I think that concludes our experiment. Thanks for watching the Idaho Show.